I've been playing around with vellum grains recently and I figured we would take a look at how to get up and running with the vellum grains. So this project file will be available on Patreon. I've got a bunch of different setups in here, just some basic things just to kind of get you up and going and how to actually get the grain set up, kind of what the different parameters mean, what they kind of do, and how to get different effects kind of started. But let's go ahead and start to make some of this ourselves. So I'm gonna drop in a geometry node and I've got some colliders here. But let's go ahead and just drop down a pig head. And just for, so we can see it, I guess. Let's drop down, oops, not a merge, an object merge. Actually, we will need this as well. So I'm gonna bring it over from the other, uh, the other geometry node that I had set up, but this is just a simple box as a collider that we're going to use to kind of set things up here. So let's take a look back at our pig head and we will template that for the moment. Let's take our pig head, let's maybe scale it down a little bit and let's move it up. And I want it to kind of hit the edge of here so it kind of breaks a little bit. So let's move it over in the Z as well, just a little bit, not too much. Maybe something like that. And we don't need our shader, so we'll just turn that off for the moment. So to actually get the vellum grains set up, we can drop down a vellum constraints grains, or configure grains. And we can wire this in, and we can wire our collider into there. We also need a vellum solver. So let's wire this up here, whoops. Wire those in, and let's jump back to the first frame. And we can take a look here. So to start off with, we have our vellum grains here and we have some different things. So right away, we see that we don't have any grains and that's because we need to check this create points from volume. You can also, if you would like, you could drop down a, a points from volume node here and kind of do it this way. Wire this in like that. And you see we get the same sort of thing and we can change around the point separation and play with it that way if we'd like, but I'm not gonna do it like that. We'll just set this volume constraints grains and use constraints or uh, create points from volume. And we can change the particle size. So maybe we drop that down to 0 0.05, get a few more particles in here. And we can also enable this jitter, which is going to just kind of randomize the position here. Let's actually drop this down just a little bit more, like 0 0.03 should be good. And this just randomizes the points so they're not in these nice little lines, but you can leave it that way if you'd like. I'm gonna go ahead and just turn that off. You can play around with the seed to get a different seed. Then we have some different settings here. We'll touch on that in a little bit here. Let's go ahead and take a look at the vellum solver and let's go ahead and press play. So pretty quick, it's going to hit the collider here and it's going to just break apart. And if we can actually turn on a ground, we select our solver, come to, where is it at, forces? Uh, oh, sorry, no, this ground position right here. If we have that enabled, we can just, Press play again, and you can see that they're going to hit the ground there and they're going to stop. And you see, we get some kind of weird behavior. If I just kind of move along here, you can see the points are jumping on top of each other and they are kind of pushing themselves out and they're kind of bouncing up and down quite a bit. It's pretty hectic, which you may or may not want. Uh, and there's some different ways to get around that. Number one, these, the first reason of why this is actually happening is because the, the individual grains here are trying to push themselves apart. And we also actually, one other thing that we need to do, I forgot to mention, uh, the, if you actually look at the Houdini documentation, it says for grains, you should always set these sub steps to at least five. So let's go ahead and do that. And if we press play now, it's gonna be a little bit slower. 
but we get our same sort of simulation going here and again the same sort of thing is happening here with the part or the the grains kind of pushing the, themselves apart but it's not as hectic or chaotic there and that kind of helps to just kind of smooth things out a little bit and you can see that they actually come to a stop and i moved way too far actually come to a stop for the most part and are pretty good there but as they're breaking apart here there's no clumping or anything going on it's not uh, super interesting it's just kind of an explosion of, of particles so we can do a couple things to change that if we come to our let's see in our advanced section come to the grain collisions we have some different settings in here and the kind of ones that you're going to want to mess with is going to be this attraction weight so if we bring this up to a value of one and we reset our simulation. Actually, press play, there we go. It's going to hit our object and it's going to clump together there and kind of stay together. And that gives it kind of like uh, an attraction force. So every particle is going to attract itself to the, the other ones. That's really all these are, just particles. Uh, they are grains, but um, they're just really particles with spheres uh, copied to them so we can kind of mess with these settings a little bit more by affecting them inside this vellum constraints grain so there's something important to note about this if we have this attraction weight set to one these values are going to multiply against those the values in in the solver so our thinking our forces so we have our friction in here and our attraction weight so these values if we enable these are going to multiply against those so just to start off here let's just actually enable just the attraction weight and if i reset our simulation now that i have this turned on if i press play you're going to see that we get this same sort of a simulation going here which is kind of all we're looking for with that but if we turn this to zero in the attraction weight even though this vellum constraints grains has a value of one, it's actually going to act like it has a value of zero because it is multiplying against the other. And we can increase the friction here and that kind of helps some of that. So if I press play, we get a little bit of a different behavior going on. Not too much, but they're kind of staying a little bit more together. And we can, Set this back to one, and if we change this, we lower this, maybe like 0.3. See, we have our friction turned up a little bit. You can see what type of effect we get. So a little bit more of a clumping, but they start to kind of break apart, and especially once they hit the ground, they really break apart. But they also kind of collapse into each other as well, which is kind of a nice little effect but the attraction weight if I go ahead and set this to a value of two you see well it starts to sometimes it gives you errors so I, I really wouldn't set that to a value of more than than one uh, in most cases I would say but uh, sometimes like I said it would give you errors if you set that attraction weight up or maybe it was just on this attraction weight let's just disable that for a moment Depending on where you set it, I'm not sure what I was doing. Maybe I was just uh, messing messing with it and hit something else. But um, I have experienced errors with that, so just keep that in mind. Oops, let's turn those back on. So the other thing with the vellum constraint grains, you may want to set these up a little bit differently. There's actually a grain source node, which we can drop this in. And this is going to give us a slightly different thing. If I take a look at our vellum, let's take a look at this one. Whoops. So we don't want to select this create points from volume. We want to leave it as the points because this is going to create points with this grain source. And by default, it's using these settings. So particle type grain, you can change this to fluid. It gives you some different effects there. I'm just going to cover the grains here. So if we set this back to like 0.03, we get a similar effect. And we can also 
come to the jitter scale again, and then we get this kind of the same sort of thing going on. And we can change the relax iterations, or we can increase the relax iterations, or whatever we want to do to get the look that we're going for. You can also increase the offset here, and that's going to give you kind of an inflated initial geometry. Like if you were using a peak node and wiring that into the vellum constraint screen or configure grain. So that is kind of the way that I would set things up is with this grain source and then wire that into the grains. You can also use a vellum constraints in here. So let's take a look at that as well. Let's wire this into there. And with this vellum constraints, there's one thing that you need to recognize and that is that the geometry type needs to be set to points and from that we should be good but let's set this to glue for this specific case so we're going to make sure that everything is on points here so those two you can play around with the different settings in here if i take a look at our constraints now so if i look at just the configure grains it's uh, kind of a weird thing it doesn't really show you the constraints but there actually there are some constraints actually there if i take a look at our vellum constraints after we have that vellum constraints node down you see that we have our lines connecting these and we can come into these and affect things differently so if we come to the let's see constraints per point we can set this up to like five and now we get some different effects so let's just take a look here at what this is giving us if i press play now and see, well, things kind of shoot off all over the place. And again, actually, this is where that attraction weight comes into play. So make sure that is set to one. And I think we should get a much different simulation here now. Things don't break, yes, they don't break nearly as much. So we have some increased friction. I'm gonna go ahead and just set that back to one press play again and we get this type of an effect so if you have the stiffness set up here in this vellum constraints if you have this set to too high you get these sort of almost like a soft body type effect going on which can be interesting if that's what you're going for if i set the constraints up to like 20 here and see what that gives us with our constraints there and in our solver if i reset that press play we don't have any breaking enabled there so you see that we get this kind of like a more of a, like a soft body type effect going on but it's still being solved with the vellum grains that kind of acts kind of grainish which is interesting but that may or may not be what you're looking for so if we take the stretch stiffness down let's set it to like maybe 1000 there and we can also enable breaking here if i press play and see what we get with that. So we get sort of a similar type of effect going on where the where we got some clumping going on, but still some breaking. If you want this to stick together even more, we can bring this up to like a value of 10 before it will actually break. And we get some different effects with that as well. So you can still use the vellum constraints with this node to kind of dial in what you're doing with the vellum grains it is a kind of finicky thing. I find that vellum in general is just kind of finicky. You play around with the, the settings quite a bit and kind of go back and forth between the different settings and you may or may not find something that you like right away. Sometimes it's quicker than others, but overall you should get to a final look if you mess around with it enough if we should find something that uh, that you like but yeah this is kind of the overall idea of this and if i let's turn off that breaking let's turn this uh, stretch down stiffness down quite a bit you can get some really weird interesting results and actually let's turn those constraints back up get some like really kind of almost like a what's the word i'm looking for uh, i'm not sure how i got it oh there it's kind of going i think yeah you get some 
some weird behavior going with these these particles or these grains. So just be careful because like obviously this isn't a realistic type of, of effect, but you can get some some interesting interesting little th uh, animations going on depending on what you have the the stiffness set to. You could kind of get like a play-doh type effect going on. I know that's probably not the best description with the grains, but uh, I know there's another like children's toy that has that looks like grains that kind of like stretches and sticks together and stuff and that's kind of kind of what you can get with with the vellum or uh, the stretchness here so or the stiffness and the stretch. But anyways, this should get you up and running with the vellum grains. Uh, obviously, you're going to have to dial in the settings quite a bit and kind of find a look that works for you. But I would play around with the different settings a lot. Uh, maybe disable the vellum constraints and just try it with the grains and the different values that you have in the friction and the traction weight, um, the repulsion, all that. To play around with those and then see where that gets you and just kind of get used to, to using those and manipulating those, see how they all work together before jumping in and adding in this vellum constraints. But anyways, like I said, this project file will be available on Patreon if you're interested, you can grab it there. I have a bunch of different setups in here, uh, similar to what we went over here, and they're all commented and everything, so you can take a look at that if you're interested. But anyways, I have a bunch of other videos on my channel that go over a bunch of different things inside Houdini. So if you're wanting to learn more about Houdini, make sure to check those videos out and you should uh, get a pretty good idea of how to, to work inside Houdini. If you have any questions, you can hop in my Discord. That link is in the description and you can ask questions there. I've got a bunch of people that help out answering questions in there as well as myself. So jump in that if you're interested. But anyways... Thank you guys for watching. Check out the other videos on my channel and have a good day.